For more, we are joined by CBS News nuclear safety consultant Cham Dallas. Cham, thanks for being with us. I'm glad to be here. The information just keeps changing and very rapidly. So that yeah. being the case, what is priority number one at this hour? The number one priority right now is to get electricity back into that plant so they can start those pumps up and so they can um, ensure that those nuclear reactor cores are not going to get uncovered from water. Um, the next priority is to find out what is going on in that uh, cooling pond, we call it, uh, in unit number four, where they have those used, kind of thrown away spent rods, uh, the spent fuel rods that are sitting in there, and that there's all sorts of uh, argument whether, whether or not those things caught on fire or not. Well, yeah, and the question is, have they got water in those cooling ponds, and why haven't they been able to get water in those cooling ponds? And why can't the Japanese officials who are there be able to agree with the head nuclear uh, policymaker in the United States who says that they're empty? The Japanese says uh, there's water there. Our top nuclear regulatory right. commission director says there isn't. And, and that's really disturbing because if there isn't water in there, and one is inclined, I'm frankly inclined to believe the NRC chairman, um, that means those rods are going to be in flux. They're either melting or they're degrading in some way. And if they do, those pellets get out and get into the bottom of the cooling uh, pond. So say yeah. they've melted down to the bottom of the right. cooling pond. What happens then? It'd be like if you had a swimming pool and you took a whole bunch of uh, baseballs and just threw them in there. Well, they're going to bump around and they're probably going to pile together. And now the big thing you've got to do is you've got to keep uranium separated from it from itself because the closer it gets together, that's what heats things up. Hmm. But when you got water in between, it stops it. But if they're right together next to each other, putting water back in there may not stop the reaction any longer. Really? We just have to think this thing through. Uh, we need to get water back in there but to keep the other rods from melting. But if some of those rods have already melted, we're in a whole new ball game. Okay, so what you're saying is, despite these efforts to get the power turned back on and get the water in these cooling tanks, that still may not be enough? It may not be enough because we may have let it go too long. Uh, we just don't know. We need to know what's going on down in those tanks. And what is disturbing is when, like I said, there's, there's this complete discrepancy between what the Japanese officials are saying mm -hmm. and our NRC head. Uh, because there's a lot of possibilities now. And, and even getting water back into that tank, if we wait too long to do it, make not solve all the issues that are down in there. What about the people that are trying very hard, desperately risking their lives right now to fix the situation as best they can? How long can they be exposed to that radiation? Well, uh, we got some reliable estimates of radiation outside the plant today. And um, it's, it's um, getting high again. And if it's that, we don't know what it is inside the reactor. It's always gonna be higher there. I tell you, those those 50 people, it may be more than 50 now that are in there. Um, like I, I gave a story, of course, on uh, CBS News, uh, the evening show with Katie Couric about this one individual who I have found out about who said he's ready to die because that's his job. They're the ones holding the they're the ones holding back the tiger right now, mm -hmm. and uh, that to me would be a major priority. We said these other priorities, and they're true, but after that. My priority would be to get the aid to these individuals that are in there holding this back and quite frankly figure out a way to protect them while they're doing it. Because they've been doing this for days upon days now. Yes, the gentleman that I know of that I talked about the other night, uh, we discovered that he has some uh, family that he's lost. Uh, and they took some of the people out because they thought they might be getting ill and he went back in. Mm. And, uh, yeah, that's something else. Very yeah. heroic yeah. indeed. And, yeah. you know, let's move away from yeah. the plant itself and, and here to the U.S. because we are getting reports today that um, there are signs of radiation coming off passengers that have mm -hmm. left Tokyo and flown to the U.S. How dangerous is that? Not at all. Um, that, that's really, it's true. You, you can measure these people. They may have a few stray particles. They are not dangerous. They're not in any, you know, they're not in any distress. Uh, the thing is, is our instrumentation is so good now, we can detect radiation at very low levels. I mean, just trace tiny amounts of radioactivity. So just because we can detect it doesn't mean it's hazardous in any way. Those patients coming back on those planes, <laughs> patients, I call them patients, those passengers coming back on their planes are not patients. Mm -hmm. They're just people with a few stray radioactive particles on them. So if I came in contact with them, you came in contact with them, we're okay? Yeah. 
There's no danger from those people. Not at this point. You got to remember, I spent all those years at Chernobyl, and we had people coming out of that place that had real heavy loads of radioactivity on them, and we would decon them, and they were fine. Most of those people, nearly all of them, are well today. Okay, but that's the situation when the radiation levels are low, say, mm -hmm. in Tokyo. But this continues to occur. We're going into day after day after day of this, and if those radiation levels yeah. increase, is that a whole different story? Yeah, that's going to be a different story later. If, if, if we keep if this takes another twist and a turn, and this one has done several twists and turns already, if it takes another twist and a turn, yeah, we might see something different later. But the people coming in now, I just have to live in the present. Uh, the good news is that they're fine, and, and anyone coming in contact with them is fine. We'll see what happens later. We are watching very carefully CBS News mm -hmm. nuclear safety consultant Cham Dallas. Cham, thanks for being with us. Oh, I'm glad to be here.